in the headlines. PDP Northern Elders endorsed Saraki Bala Muhammad as consensus candidate for, of the party as Tambwal Group rejects candidates. Ishaku orders operation stop and search in Taraba State after two bombings in four days. A laughing of Oyo Lamedia DME laid to rest. Away from Nigeria, Israel closes crossing to Gazans after new rocket attacks. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. <music> Beginning with political stories, ahead of the 2023 presidential election, the Northern Elders endorsed Saraki Bala Muhammad as consensus candidate of the party. The duo, alongside Governor Aminu Tambol of Sokoto and Mohammed Hayatuddin, had worked to produce a consensus candidate from the region. According to Professor Angu Adlahi, head of the committee, which carried out a three-phase screening from where Saraki and Mohammed emerged the exercise, was thorough. In the report of the committee cited by Daily Trust, Saraki and Mohammed had 10 votes each, while Tambol trailed with seven votes, followed by Hayatuddin, who had five votes. One of the elders reportedly deferred his votes on grounds of continuing consultations without tradition, with traditional rulers and major stakeholders. Two members were said to have been have cast their second ballot, bringing the total to 32 votes cast out of the 36. The Tumwell Campaign Organization, TCO, has dismissed reports that Northern Consensus presidential candidate for the People's Democratic Party had been picked. In a statement signed by its Director of Organization and Mobilization, Nicolas Micheliza, TCO described the report that former Senate President Bukola Saraki and Bauchi State Governor Bala Muhammad emerged the consensus candidates of the North as incorrect and false. Some Northern elders of the PDP endorsed Muhammad and Saraki as the consensus candidates of the party after a meeting in Mina, Niger State. The statement said that the correct situation is that the team met on Wednesday, 20th of April, 2022, at Bauchi Governor's Lodge in Abuja for a review meeting and unanimously agreed that the consensus arrangement was not working. In the same vein, former Jiga State Governor Sule Lamido has described the purported adoption of Governor Bala Muhammad of Bochi and former Senate President Bukola Saraki as possible consensus candidates of the PDP by some Northern elders as a nullity. Reaction, reacting to the development in a statement he personally signed on Saturday, Lamido maintained that the set adoption was a personal decision of few individuals as he did not get the buy-in of the relevant stakeholders of the party from the North. Besides, the, he argued that the position of the Northern Elders was not in consonance with democracy, just as it will be against the interests of the North and the aspirants themselves. He, no fewer than four prominent Northerners are aspiring for the presidency of Nigeria under the PDP for 2023, including the former Vice President Atikwa Ubakar Saraki, Senator Mohammed Amin Waziri Tambwal of Sokoto State. He insisted that discussions were ongoing with all the aspirants in the party with a view to having a national consensus, if possible, or at least working towards having a smooth, acrimony free national convention. Besides, Lamido said such hurried position of the Northern Elders is not only injurious to the North, but equally injurious to the Northern aspirants. Staying with political matters, the Vice President Professor Yemi Osibajo on Friday visited the Olubadon of Ibadan, Senator Lekon Balogun, to officially inform him of his presidential ambition. The monarch offered the Vice President his royal blessings. The VP also met with all Progressive Congress delegates in Oyo State. During the meeting, he said that he was confident that the past seven years as VP have prepared him for the office of the President. Presenting his political credentials before the delegates, the vice president said that he has spent the past couple of years in training and preparation. He therefore believes that he has had ample experience to hit the ground running if elected 
as the next president to take over from Buhari. Osimbajo had formally declared his intention to run for president in 2023 on April 11th. 2022, I declared my intention to run for the presidency of our great country under uh, the flag of our party, Great Party, the All Progressive Congress. I did so, was taking into account the fact that our country always will need all of those who are willing to serve it to the best of their capacity, to the best of their knowledge. In God's name, you will be president of Nigeria. Like we watch ourselves, God watches us too. Nine out of ten cases, what we think of ourselves is what God thinks about us. Vice President, very wonderful human being, very wonderful person. May I grant you access to what you have on I have served in the government, the federal government of Nigeria for the past seven years. And in those seven years, I have been involved because the president considered it right to do and in his own generosity and his own and his openness he gave me every opportunity to serve, including very sensitive international assignments. As you know, I also acted as president during certain periods when the president was away on medical vacation. Everything that I learned as vice president, everything that I've learned as acting president has prepared me, prepared me to run as president of our country and to function as president of our country. Now, a youth group has accused the Nigerian government of failing to secure the lives and property of Nigerians and fight corruption. The group stated this while addressing journalists on the state of the nation in Abuja. The report. The PDP New Generation, a youth group under the People's Democratic Party, has accused the current government of failing Nigerians. The group faulted the APC government for failing to take proactive measures to protect citizens' lives and properties while lamenting the rising spate of insecurity across the country. Permit me to say that the incumbent has failed Nigerians woefully. Insecurity has paralyzed economy and social activities in almost all the sections of this country. Within the past seven years of the APC tenure, tens of thousands of Nigerians have been killed or kidnapped by insurgents, bandits, or unknown gunmen. How do also describe the anti-corruption mantra of the government as a mere charade used to win elections? The anti-corruption mantra of this administration is a mere charade born out of the suppressor tricks that cajole the masses in voting them into power. In a just-released United States Annual Country Report on Human Rights Practices covering international recognized individual, civil, political, and workers' rights, top members of the APC-led government were indicted for taking advantage of the immunity attached to their positions to perpetrate corrupt acts and misappropriation of public funds. He, however, called on teaming Nigerians, especially youths, to act decisively to save the country from its current situation. The well-being of this nation hangs in the balance. If we do not act decisively, the demands of the moment will find us wanting and history will issue a terrible verdict against us all. These mayhems that have visited our schools, roads, railways and airports in the last few weeks might have revealed a carelessness of leadership at the federal level in being proactive towards addressing justly reported cases of attacks and threats to lives and properties of Nigerians. Sagi Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. Over now to security. Three days after members of the Islamic State in West Africa province bombed a bar in Taraba State, the state has recorded yet another explosion. In the fresh explosion which occurred on Friday night, nine people reportedly sustained injuries. The explosion, it was gathered, occurred at Nukai area, which shares boundary with Arukola local government area 
of the state. Details of the explosion are still sketchy, but it reportedly occurred close to a local beer joint. Daily Trust gathered that the explosion left cracks on the walls of buildings within the site. Spokesman of Taraba Police Command, DSP Abdullahi Usman, confirmed the incident, saying that nine people sustained injuries. Taraba State Governor Darius Ishaku on Saturday ordered security agencies in the state to immediately introduce Operation Stop and Search across the state, especially in Jalingo, the state capital. The directive comes after two bombings were recorded in the state within four days. The latest bombing was recorded at Nuke Market area in Jalingo Metropolis on Friday. Terrorist group ISWAP has taken responsibility for Tuesday's bombing, which killed at least six persons. Governor Ishaku described the incident as ungodly, inhumane, barbaric, and a deliberate attempt by evil people to destabilize the state. Governor Ishaku, in a statement signed by his spokesperson, Ilya Menkyu Akwe, directed security agencies in the state to network through proper investigation to fish out the terrorists, whom he said are working relentlessly to destabilize the peace of the state. Hoodlums suspected to be bandits have attacked Adavi police station in Kogi State at early hours of Saturday, killing three policemen. The Kogi State Police Public Relations Officer S.P. William Ovie Aya disclosed this to Daily Trust in Lokoja in a statement on Saturday. He added that the command lost three of its officers during the gun war, while the hoodlums fled with gunshot wounds as they could not get access to the station. He said the State Commissioner of Police CP, Edward Ebuka, has deployed a team of tactical operatives to the area to restore normalcy while trailing the hoodlums with a view to apprehending and bringing them to book. The State Police Commissioner, com the State Police Command, uh, called on the people of Adavi and the adjoining communities to be on the lookout and report anybody seen with blood wounds to the police or any security forces nearest to them. Now, the Alafin of Oyo Baba Lamidi, Oba Lamidi Adeyemi III, has been buried in the ancient town of Oyo in southwest Nigeria. His remains were laid to rest on Saturday within the premises of the palace, barely a day after he was certified dead in a hospital in Adoekiti, the Ekiti state capital. Alafin, popularly known as Iku Baba Yeye, was 83 years, 83 years as of the time his death was announced. Following the announcement of his demise, Islamic rites were conducted on the body of late Alafin, signaling the beginning of his final journey home. Islamic clerics led by chief imam of Oyo town were joined by members of the family of the late traditional ruler and some of his chiefs to offer prayers for the repose of his soul. After the prayers, his body was taken back to the palace where the funeral was held. An Oyo prince and a close relative of the Alafing Archbishop Ayo Ladibolu confirmed the burial of the monarch. You're watching Trust News Update, coming up shortly. Nasarawa State Government arrests 211 sanitation violators. Details and more after the break. Please stay. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. Thanks for staying here watching Trust News Update. Here is a look at the top stories again. Ahead of the 2023 presidential election, the Northern Elders Forum has endorsed former Senate President 
Vukola Saraki and Bala Mohammed of Bochi State as Stambul Suleilamido rejects candidate. Taraba State Governor Darius Ishaku on Saturday ordered security agencies in the state to immediately introduce Operation Stop and Search across the state, especially in Jalingo, the state capital. Now, the Lagos State Government has directed the reopening of all Christland schools in the state. Recall that the Christland schools were shut down on April 18, 2022 by the state government over the controversies and outrage that followed the viral sex tape of minors who are pupils of the school. Some pupils from the school during a recent trip to Dubai to participate in the World School Games between, the age, between March 10 and 13, 2022, engaged in a sexual act. The controversies led to the suspension of the school by the state government. However, the Lagos State Commissioner for Education, Mrs. Falasha De Adifisayo, explained that the reopening of the school was to ensure that other students were not denied access to learning while an investigation into the issue continued. In a statement she signed, the commissioner said the school's Parent Teachers Association will be working on scheduled psychosocial support for the students involved in the immoral act. A combined team of police and vigilantes has neutralized two terrorists at Saikira Gamzago in Kafur local government area of Katsina State. The bandits invaded the village and abducted one Hama Sanusi and her daughter. Abdullahi Amadi has more. Kafur local government area of Katsina State is one of the locations described as frontline insecurity prone localities. The attack on Thursday morning by bandits armed with AK-47 assault rifles is the latest onslaught on the area. But this time around, the terrorists met their march. The command, while confirming the bandits' attack, said the terrorists stormed the village shooting sporadically with AK-47 rifles Thursday morning. Terrorists in their numbers... Uh, attacked a village, that village uh, in Kafur local government area. So before you know, we engaged them, uh, both the police and members of the vigilante. And uh, in an exchange of gun duel, uh, we were able to neutralize two of these bandits. They were seven in numbers according to the report. The others uh, fled the scene. Spokesman of Kazuna State Police Command, SP Gambo Isa, says Two abducted victims, Hama Sanusi and her daughter, Aisha Sanusi, were rescued and hurt. The police also recovered two locally fabricated pistols with six rounds of ammunition from the terrorists. And so many other things, such as criminal charms, uh, they are here. We are conducting an investigation into the matter with a view. In fact, right now that I am speaking to you, such parties are combing the area with a view of uh, arresting the other members of the syndicate. Some of the terrorists escaped and fled into the forest with gunshot wounds. However, the police and other security agents are combing the area with a view to arresting the fleeing terrorists. The Kazuna State Police Command is also soliciting for the continued support from the people of the state to provide credible information that could lead to restoration of peace and tranquility. It could be recalled that terrorists killed a newly elected councillor in Gozeki Ward of Kafur local government area of Kazuna State Wednesday night. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazuna. 211 persons have been arrested for alleged violation of the monthly sanitation exercise in Nasara State. State Chief Prosecuting Officer on Violators of Environmental Sanitation Exercise, Abu Bakar Muhammad, disclosed this while addressing journalists on the exercise in Lafia. Abu Bakar Abdullahi files in this report. The state monthly sanitation exercise is usually carried out on the last Saturday of every month. For the month of April, it was brought backwards because the last Saturday of the month is the eve of the Salah celebration and Muslims will be in preparation for the celebration. Addressing journalists after the exercise, the Chief Prosecuting Officer on Violators of the Exercise, Abu Bakr Muhammad, said those arrested failed to comply with the exercise 
adding that they will be prosecuted before a mobile court. In the whole state, we have about 211 reporters. 211, because I received all the, I received reports from all the local governments. And uh, 211 reporters. And, uh, but here, we have only 18 reporters that are appears before the court, and uh, you can see them. They, with the IDK and also the uh, machines that they have and uh, they are now before the uh, Honorable Judge uh, uh, Honorable Abdullah Ilanze and, uh, who is now the presiding judge and we are going to prosecute them according to the provision of the law. He said despite the violation of the exercise by some residents, the compliance in most parts of the state is impressive. The chief prosecuting officer further explained that because of the commencement of the rainfall, the State Waste Management Bureau has directed residents to evacuate non-needed materials in their drainages to avoid flooding. We have issues notice, sis, uh, from the Minnesota State Waste Management Bureau and uh, people to desilt their environment, their, their drainages and in which section two and three of uh, environmental law to uh, capture this. It is the, as, as I am saying, let me just quote it. It is the uh, duty of the owner or occupier to clear the drainages in front of him and across the site. And that's the provision. And failure to do this attracts the sum of like, 10,000 dollars. He called on residents to continue sustaining the exercise in order to ensure a clean and hygienic environment. The federal government has approved the reopening of four land borders which were shut down in August 2019. Recall that President Muhammadu Buhari-led administration closed major borders as part of efforts to curtail smuggling and boost local production of rice and other products. The government However, on December 16, 2020, approved the reopening of some of the borders, including Mfum, Seme, Ilela, and Megatari Loop borders. Similarly, a circular issued on Friday by the Deputy Controller General of the Customs Service, E.I. Edohe, said Idiroko border post in Ogun State, Kamba border post in Kebi State, Jibia border post in Katsina State, and Ecom border post in Cross River State have been reopened. Away from Nigeria, Israel will close its only crossing for Palestinian workers coming from the Gaza Strip after it said three rockets were fired from the besieged territory as tensions continue to mount during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. The move announced on Saturday comes after the Israeli army accused Hamas, the armed group that rules the Gaza Strip, of firing three rockets into Israel late on Friday. One hit an open field inside Israel, while another fell inside the Palestinian territory, the Israeli army said, without providing details on the third one. Earlier this week, the Israeli army said four rockets were launched from Gaza, but were intercepted by air defense systems. Israel carried out air raids in different areas of the Gaza Strip twice last week, with the Israeli military saying its fighter jets attacked military targets. And in sports news, there is uncertainty over the long-term feature of Emmanuel Dennis at Watford a few months before the opening of the transfer window. According to the boot room, Newcastle United and West Ham United are keeping tabs on the Nigerian international in the event that Watford are relegated from the top flight. Six matches to the end of the season, the Hornets find themselves in relegation waters, sitting in 19th part place with 22 points, 7 points from safety. Dennis has been, on, has been one of the success stories in what has been a miserable season for Watford, topping the club's charts for goals with 10 and 5 assists in the Premier League. Amid interest from other clubs in Italy and Spain, the Super Eagle striker is set to hold talks with Watford Chiefs at the end of the season and his priority is to remain in the Premier League. It has been suggested that a bid of £30 million will be enough to tempt Watford into selling their numbers. And that wraps up Trust News update at this moment. Connect with us via our social media platforms and also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch us live. 
I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.